In today's video, we are making those unique kicks that producers, DJs and ravers love to hear right before a hard techno drop. As always, if you are looking for hard and industrial techno kicks and serum presets, check out my website and now I will explain why the kicks we are making today are so different from the hard techno ones you've seen in many tutorials I already did. You see, typically the low end and hard techno comes from the reverb rumble. It gives a great rhythm, but rumbles don't sound metallic and sharp. Our hard style kicks will use instead a wavetable since, like Serum or Vital, hard and industrial kicks need a few layers of punch to sound full in the beginning. Our hard style kicks sometimes don't even have low end in the punch. We can reduce it to basically a single clicky sound for transient. To smooth out the whole kick, we will add on top side chain reverb and glue everything in the group processing. I will start with the clicky transient. We need a snappy and short sound, so when choosing the kick sample, pay most attention to the transient, the beginning part of any kick. Samples like like this are a good starting point. I took them from the Vengeance Essential Club Sounds Volume 2 sample pack from the Tech House Kicks folder. Load the kick onto the drum rack and shorten it to around 100 milliseconds. Also, turn down the sample volume to prevent unwanted clipping and now, surprise surprise, distort the sample. We need a specific type of distortion called a bit crusher. It's so special because unlike typical drum bass or decapitator distortion, bit crushers add a lot of noise and fuzz. A simple option is to use Ableton's Redux with the bits knob turned down to around zero and DC shift on for a crazier sound. An advanced alternative is Ableton's Roar effect. Set the routing to single and in the first distortion stage choose the bit crush option. For now just turn up the distortion amount until you hear a nice fuzz. This distortion must go along with an effect you already know from either my industrial kick tutorials or private music production lessons that will save you tons of time while supercharging your progress. Visit my website to learn more and schedule a free consultation call. The effect I'm talking about is an equalizer that goes before the distortion. Use a high pass filter where three things are important. The first one is the cut of frequency that should be in the range between 300Hz and 1kHz. The second one is the filter resonance that must be large. The last thing is the filter slope. This changes the filter shape and as a result the whole sound. These three controls already give tons of variations, so even a simple equalizer like Ableton's EQ8 will be enough. If you nailed these three settings, take the kick to the next level by adding an extra peak filter. If you use at least 10 decibels of gain in the same 300 to 1 kHz frequency range, you can add more taste to the kick. But this peak filter must have a very high Q value. Otherwise, that extra resonance will be inaudible. In the end, my EQ settings look like that. After shaping the kick with an EQ, I return to the raw effect. Here I focus only on both amount and bias that, from my experience, should be touched just slightly. If the kick after distortion gets loud, turn down the output. From now on, it's easy to create different transients by using a different sample or by changing the sample pitch. I will stick to this transient, to which I will add now a bass layer. Such bass is super easy to make. We will just need a synthesizer, distortion, some sidechain and EQ. Create a new MIDI channel, add a serum synthesizer and turn off any oscillator except the first one. 90% of your bass will come just from this oscillator settings. Play a one beat long MIDI note and in serum focus on two things. The first one is the wavetable. I heavily recommend here spectral wavetables that have lots of harmonics and grid. Try different wavetables and play around with the wavetable knob position until you find the sound you like. The second thing to pay attention to is the pitch. On the right you can see the frequency spectrum of our bass. This fundamental frequency should be around 40 Hz. This guarantees both full low end and sharp sound. If this peak hovers around 30 Hz or 60 Hz, 
the bassline will sound worse. After nailing both wavetable and pitch, there are only three minor adjustments to make. At first, fine tune the bass tone using the warping section and the oscillator. Stick here with the old warp options that won't change the bassline too much. After that, beef up the sound with distortion. Keep it simple. There is no need to use the filter section, so choose only the distortion style and the amount. My suggestion is to pick either diode 1, diode 2, lineal fold or sine fold type of distortion. If you see anywhere that the baseline volume will redline the mixer soon, turn down the output and sidechain the baseline. The easiest way would be to use an effect like Kickstart tool, Tal Filter tool or LFO tool. And here's the tip. Adjusting the sidechain effect is about the rhythm you will find much easier if you keep the transient part of the kick playing in the background. If you end up with a bass sound that has a quiet low end, fix that with an equalizer to boost the volume of that fundamental frequency we've been looking at in the Voxenko span earlier. The last kick layer is the sidechain reverb that will make the kick sound fuller and less dry. We will make it out of the bass line. So duplicate the bass channel and in the end add a reverb like Convology XT, Walhalla Vintage Web or Ableton's Hybrid Reverb that I will use now. Set the dry width to 100% and switch the routing to use the Convolution Reverb only. Not only it's easier to set up, but it also has a certain type of reverb I recommend using. I'm talking about the plate reverb that gives a bright sharp sound perfect for our kick. I start with choosing the right plate type and fine tuning the reverb settings. Just like in classic reverbs, size impacts the sound most. The reverb length shouldn't be longer than 3 seconds to not make the sound too washed out. Even 500 milliseconds can be fine. Notice I'm playing both transient and bass in the background. It helps me much more to make the reverb fit the rest of the kick. For minor adjustments to the reverb, experiment with attack, pre-delay and feedback. There are two essential things I have to do. At first, the sidechain compression that sounds very similar to what I did with the bass. The second essential thing is a high pass filter. We used reverb on the bass and as a result, the reverb has some low end. We must cut it out, otherwise the low end from both reverb and bass will overlap, making the kick less solid. It also sounds better when the reverb is lighter, so I can push the cutoff frequency to even around 400 Hz. It's time for the group processing, where I have to explain something important. Unlike an in industrial techno kicks, where in the group processing we use a lot of distortion to add glue and crunch, our hardstyle kicks must have little of processing here. This means that 90% of our sound has to come from these three channels alone, and the group processing is the remaining 10%. If at this moment your transient isn't clicky, your bass isn't crunchy, or your reverb isn't metallic, you must tweak these sounds more. Group processing will not fix any of these issues. With that said, I group all three channels and I balance the volume levels of each sound with utility effects. The first effect in the group I use is distortion. It will add some glue, but what's more important is that I set up this effect to add extra noise to the kick. This will give me a brighter sound. Notice how subtle the difference in sound is. Thanks to that, the kick stays clicky. If I used different settings with more distortion, the bass would get crunchier, but the clicky transient would disappear. So, if you want to have a crunchier bass, just use more distortion on the bass channel. We are in the moment where I want to glue the kick more, but using more distortion, as you have seen earlier, will remove the clicky transient. From now on, to glue the kick more, I have to use the multiband compression. I already split the kick into low, mid and high frequencies using crossover filters. What I will show you now will be very important. Our click and transient is mostly in the high end. 
Tampering with the high end end anyway is going to make the transient worse. That's why the high end compression is off. The low end has nothing but the low end coming from the base channel. There is nothing to compress here. We will compress only the mid range. Multiband dynamics from Ableton lets me to apply both upward and downwards compression, which is great. The downward compression will make the kick in the beginning poke out less and the upward one will make the mid frequencies of the bass appear a bit earlier. If you want to learn more about multiband compression, watch this in depth tutorial that will explain everything you need to know. Here I will show you only the difference in sound before and after gluing. The compressor processes the mids most while leaving the low end and high end untouched. This is the exact opposite of an OTT compression that treats high and low end much more roughly compared to the mid range. This fundamental difference explains why, at least in my opinion, an OTT shouldn't be used on such kicks at least in the group processing. After gluing the kick, what's left is the equalization. I start out with cleaning the 150 to 400 Hz range, where usually we have mud in the kick sound. That mud covers the low end. Unless you get rid of it, your kicks will never sound deep. That's why I usually cut the mud before using a low show filter to boost the low end. Now, in the mid-range, you will have two frequency ranges you nearly always want to cut. The first one is 2 kHz that gives a low-pitched hissy sound. This is what does that frequency range sound like. And here is a filter that cuts it. The second frequency range is from around 400 to 700 Hz, where typically a hollow kick sound comes from. High frequencies from around 6 kHz upwards can have a lot of hiss. To clean up the high end, I use these two filters. Notice that in the mids and high end we only cut frequencies with no boosts in between. As a result, my kick, while it's clean, isn't as bright as it should. A solution for that is a high shelf filter that boosts a wide range of frequencies. This will brighten up the kick in a natural way. And along the way, I added two extra filters in the bass channel. To finish the kick, it might be necessary to improve the transient. Let's say you play the kick with all the sounds and discover that the kick must be more powerful in the beginning. There are two ways to improve that. If the click of the kick needs to be fuller, use more distortion in the transient channel. I noticed that the dynamic tube nicely adds extra noise to the beginning of the kick. I paired this effect with an equalizer that, as you can see, cleans up the mid-range. If you want the transient to be more clicky, the only way is to work with the group processing. Here we can use for example a transient shaper plugin. Right after the equalizer, I load the new fangled punctuate that is so far my favorite transient shaper. There are other techniques and tricks for improving the transient and I show them in another tutorial I made where I also explain what exactly a transient is. Again, this plugin is used in the group processing, so we make here tiny adjustments. The kick I made in this tutorial will be a part of another tutorial where I will show you how to produce a full industrial techno track in style of Vizia Aspak. If you can't wait for such video, you will for sure be interested now in Vizia Aspak kick tutorial that is one of my most popular and in-depth tutorials for industrial kicks.